Hi, my name is Dr. Halim Jafar Hamarashid. Uh, I'm periodontist. Today I have a lecture in the title of Influence of Systemic Conditions on Periodontia. Actually, we are in, in a new chapter uh, in Karan Zai book, uh, which is the relationship between periodontia and the systemic health. We are starting with the influence of systemic conditions on periodontia. We go gradually through endodontics, hematological disorders, psychological stress, genetic problems, and medications. Please subscribe to my channel, Dr. Harim Jafar Hamar Rashid, to get more videos on this subject. Starting from endocrine. And the endocrine disorders, mainly we have uh, diabetes mellitus. Endocrine diseases such as diabetic and hormonal fluctuations that are associated with puberty and pregnancy are well-known examples of systemic conditions that adversely affect the periodontium. Endocrine disturbances and hormonal fluctuations affect the periodontal tissue directly and modifying the tissue response to local factor and produce an atomic change in the gingiva that may favor plug accumulation and disease progression and we know that uh, diabetes and uh, diabetic uh, patient and periodontal disease uh, and or, or both of these diseases have a two-way relationship that say the periodontal disease affect the, the diabetic patient and the diabetes by itself affecting the periodontia so we start from the oral manifestation of the diabetic. Usually uh, diabetic patients have some uh, general oral man manifestations for example uh, we may have for example delay wound healing, it's common, xerostomia or salivary dysfunction and uh, multiple caries is also common a bad odor or foul taste, uh, they have a pathognomonic, t uh, pathognomonic bad odor, which is uh, ketoacidosis, and also signs and symptoms of gingivitis and periodontitis, like bleeding and probing, like uh, mobile teeth, bone loss, and etc. So we are talking about uh, the main pathogenesis of the main problems that happen in diabetic mellitus uh, intraorally, including periodontal disease. In case of periodontal disease, there will be accumulation of uh, IgE. IgE is accumulated in glycosylation end product. It affects the collagen fiber uh, fibers healing and uh, it affects the breakdown of the collagen fibers. So accumulation of this end product in periodontal tissue and decreased periodontal regeneration capacity and defense def defective immune regulation. So in this case, uh, that's why we get uh, the periodontal disease in cases of diabetes mellitus. While well, regarding the treatment and prevention of this is assessment of risk uh, of the disease progression, periodic reviewers uh, and dietary advice and periodontal uh, therapy. Well, regarding the dry mouth, xerostomia, which also affect the plug accumulation and affecting the periodontal disease as general. The pathogenesis happen uh, because of the reduced salivary flow as a result of polyuria and dehydration. And the treatment will be by proper control diabetes and dental hygiene measures. While multiple caries, it happens as a result of gingival resorption or gingival recession and decreased salivary flow. Uh, the use of fluoridated base restorative treatment and the optimal glycemic control will prevent the progression. While well, sometimes you have oral candidiasis because of salivary dysfunction and hyperglycemia and impaired immune system. 
The treatment will be antifungal, like nystatin or muconazole treatment, and good glycemic control and prevention. Sometimes in pulp necrosis and periodontal abscess happens in case of diabetic because of there's there will be an ischemic tissue damage related uh, to the pulp uh, own vascular damages from the diabetes. So in these cases, endodontic treatment and control of diabetic uh, will be the treatment of choice. Delay wound healing and uh, increase the incidence of infection following surgery co caused by vascular dysfunction and decrease immunity or uh, increase, decreasing the innate immune response in diabetics. Uh, the treatment is by preventive administration of antibiotic and good glycemic control. So these are regarding the oral manifestation and their treatments. The, regarding, in cases of diabetics, we have bacterial pathogens. Uh, for example, in type 1, we have most probably Capnocytophaga, Actinomyces, P. gingivalis, P. intermedia, and type 2, we have also P. gingivalis, P. intermedia, and Cyrectus, which all of these are mainly gram negatives, you know, which affect the progression of the uh, of the periodontal disease. So, the the diabetic patient, uh, it, or in diabetic patient, there is an, a qualitative change in the types of bacteria. That's say. It, uh, it goes from more gram-positive to more gram-negative one. Regarding a polymorphonucleus dysfunction, uh, in case of diabetic mellitus, there will be a, a dysfunction of beta cells and there will be an increased secretion of accumulated glycosylation end products and there will be a polymorphonucleus dysfunction. And by that, they will uh, release cytokines like interleukin and tumor necrosis factor, by which they affect both the collagen fiber degradation and bone degradation and lead to uh, formation or progression of periodontitis. So the increased susceptibility of diabetic patient to infection has been hypothesized as being caused by polymorphonucleus deficiency, resulting in impaired chemotaxis and defective phagocytosis or impaired adherence. So in patient with poorly controlled diabetic, the function of polymorphonucleus and monocytes are impaired. As a result, the primary defense against the periodontal pathogen is diminished, diminished and the bacterial pro proliferation is more likely to occur. So there will be an impairment in the polymorphonucleus, uh, but there is no alteration of immunoglobulin uh, like IgA, IgG or IgM uh, in diabetic patients. So this is regarding the polymorphonucleus dysfunction. Regarding the altered collagen metabolism, we said that chronic hyperglycemia impairs collagen structure and function, which may directly impact the integrity of the periodontium. The decreased collagen synthesis uh, in case of, for example, osteoporosis, as well as a reduction in alveolar bone height, has been demonstrated in diabetic animals. Chronic hyperglycemia adversely affects the synthesis, maturation, and maintenance of the extracellular matrix. So, in the hyperglycemic state, Numerous protein and matrix molecules undergo a non-enzymatic glycosylation, resulting in the formation of this end product, which is accumulated glycosylated end product or advanced glycation end products, and these have uh, these uh, the collagen fiber 
is cross-linked by these end products, uh, making it less soluble and less likely to be normally repaired or replaced. So making the collagen fiber more older and uh, <clears throat> they have not the possibility of repair. So there will be a cellular migration through cross-linked collagen and the tissue integrity is impaired as a result of damaged collagen resulting in the remaining in the tissue uh, resulting in uh, uh, delaying in the repair mechanism for long periods so the collagen is not renewed at a normal rate as a result collagen in the tissue of the patient with poorly controlled diabetes uh, is older and more susceptible to pathogenic breakdown that say they are less resistant to destruction by periodontal infections so and as we see here for example in case of diabetics for example in periodontal disease we have bacterial products and host responses which uh, may secrete cytokines and these cytokines by themselves <coughs> with the diabetics uh, secreting or creating an accumulated glycosylated in the products and many other products <clears throat> that will lead to formation of enhanced periodontal ligament and osteoblast apoptosis or loss and reduced bone forms and enhanced osteoclastogenesis and by the way leading to alveolar bone loss and this is regarding the the effects of uh, endocrine uh, diseases, especially diabetics, on the periodontal or periodontal disease. Uh, this is uh, enough for now, and I will discuss with you the other, uh, the other, if uh, the effects of the other conditions like hematological, psychological, and etc. In the next lecture, don't forget to follow me on my YouTube channel, Dr. Haram Jafar Hamrashid. Have a nice day.